Hello guys, I'm going to solve these image based questions for you. So be prepared. This is question number one. You just have to identify this muscle, the green colored muscle, and tell me the nerve supply for this. So this muscle is which it's easy question. This is deltoid muscle. And because it's for you to learn also, so let me revise this muscle for you fast. There you seeing is a bony prominence here, the horseshoe shaped bony margins that you are seeing is here. Like this. This is a horseshoe shaped bony margin, right? So on to which it takes origin, like later one third of the clavicle anterior surface, acromion little uh, edge of this acromion and then you have the spinoscapula the lower lip of the spinoscapula and the posterior most fibers from where it arises is you know the spine has a tubercle here this is called deltoid tubercle so this deltoid tubercle is a uh, tubercle on the lower of the spine at the root end the medial most end so that's the point from where the posterior most fibers of the deltoid take origin remember it's not deltoid tuberosity it's deltoid tubercle then about the insertion of this muscle insertion you know it takes place here at the mid shaft of humerus on the lateral border there is this v-shaped tuberosity and this is called deltoid tuberosity Right now, about the different types of fibers, there are clavicular head, it's like reaching down here and really crossing the shoulder joint. So, this, cla this clavicular head will also flex the shoulder joint as well as medial rooted. Similarly, the posterior fibers coming from the lower edge of the spine or scapula, they will also insert here. What will they do? They will cause extension at the shoulder as well as lateral rotation of the humerus. Then, about this, you know, the Acromial fibers, the lateral fibers, those fibers are multipinnate. Now, these fibers you see here, they have fibrous intermuscular intersections at the origin as well as the insertion end. So, these provide, you know, origin to multiple fibers that makes this muscle multipinnate. Remember, the biceps, entire muscle is not multipinnate, it is the acromial fibers or the lateral fibers that are multipinnate and what does it do it you know it initiates it, it takes abduction from 15 to 90 degrees right and apart from that it's also like you know when you are what else was left is uh, you know i have taught you all the movements what is left is like adduction no doubt adduction to a very much limit but when you are like adducting with this pectoralis major right so the anterior fibers bilaterally also have this little bit role of adduction so in short by deltoid is like actually providing all sort of movements of the shoulder joint and when you combine you know extension abduction flexion and then adduction this comes to be forming a circumduction so all the movements that are possible at the shoulder joint and don't forget that shoulder joint is the most mobile most freely movable joint in the human body a ball and socket variety and the freedom you're getting is because the head of femur the much of the head of femur it stays out of the contact with the glenoid facet right so, and but for that you know it actually is compromising its stability you know you have so many you know capsule plus this is you know the rotator cuff muscles then you have coracoacromial arch and all that you have is the deltoid so all that production is from the front from above from behind but inferiorly it's like you know not so much a strong joint so there are more chances for inferior dislocation of this shoulder joint okay now the nerve supply is you know the axillary nerve which passes behind the surgical neck of the humerus is split into two branches superficial branch runs above to this surface and supplies the skin here on the superlateral surface of you know you can say superior lateral cutaneous nerve in the arm that supplies the skin here in the lower of the deltoid and that is called the regimental area while the deeper branch you know weights the muscle from the deeper surface and that also gives a twig to teres minor that's called nerve to teres minor which also has a pseudo ganglia. So that was all. Let's move to question number two. 
identify the muscle shown in the image and it's no supply you guessed it so let me tell you the answer now this muscle here is flexor hallucis brevis muscle it's a muscle of the third layer of the soul you know the third layer is called the flexor layer and you have two flexors flexor hallucis brevis on the medial side and flexor digi mini me on the little side and in between we have is the adductor hallucis so the third layer is made up of purely intrinsic muscles the three intrinsic muscles of the soul an important point about the third layer is that it is only present in the distal half of the foot so this muscle you know both these flexors they actually cover the plantar surface of the first and the fifth metatarsal. so you can see that this flexor hallucis brevis is you know on the plantar aspect is covered it's covering this first metatarsal. so now it has two heads of origin a little head and a medial head so the medial head you know i told you it has a morphological significance that the medial head of tris, uh, flexor hallucis brevis is supposed to be a continuation of the tibialis posterior remember tibialis posterior was having a wide insertion on the tarsal bones except talus and the middle three metatarsals also so in this tibialis posterior is supposed to reach up to the greater toe in the form of medial head of flexor hallucis brevis then you have a lateral head also now the lateral head actually arises from the under surface of this cuboid the medial edge of the cuboid along with the adjacent bone that is the lateral kidney form and you know that cuboid on the under surface has a groove for the tendon of peroneus longus from the cubital tunnel and there's a fascia that covers this tunnel so this lateral head of flexor hallucis brevis takes origin from behind to the groove of peroneus longus on the under surface of cuboid as well as the lateral kidney form that it the two heads join together now what happens when they reach to is the ball of the greater toe you know this is a big bony thing and uh, so it is splits there it splits into two heads and in between the two splitted ends what passes here is the long tendon flexor hallucis longus coming from the back of leg so the longus will reach to the terminal phalanx on the plantar aspect but this one is a previous one so it will attach on two sides of the proximal phalanx of the greater toe another important point is that this is the muscle which has two sesamoid bones placed on the two sides of the greater you know the ball of the greater toe so this is an easy thing which you can this will help you identify that it has sesamoid bones in its tendon on the two sides and these this is embracing the deeper tendon called flexor hallucis longus so i think it's understood now and what about its nerve supply obviously this nerve because you know both hallucis uh flexor you know this one uh, abductor hallucis which is the muscle of the first layer and this one is flexor hallucis brevis they are supplied by medial plantar nerve okay there are two more muscles which are supplied by medial you know out of 14 intrinsic muscles in the soul right out of four uh, you know sorry 18 muscles out of those 18 muscles 14 are being supplied by little plantar now and only four are being supplied by median plantar now out of those four med uh, muscles supplied by median medial plantar now the two i told you one from i mean the two muscles of the first layer one is abductor hallucis brevis or you can simply say abductor hallucis there's no longus and then you we have known there's a flexor digitorum brevis so abductor hallucis flexor digitorum brevis then this muscle the third layer that is flexor hallucis brevis and the first lumbricle four muscles so that's by median plantar now question number three is identify the histology slide and undefined features which slide is this can you this is a thick epithelium it's a thick epithelium with multiple layered cellularity and in fact you cannot see the nuclearity uh, the nuclei in the top layers not very much visible because it's a deeply stained thing uh, but one thing you have seen is this papillary projection at the lower edges, edge of this epithelium and down below you are finding i think there's a connective tissue some blood vessels also being seen here okay but uh, I, I don't think you're finding any skeletal muscles there 
uh, the glands are also not very much visible here, like mucous acinous glands. You're not even finding the hair follicles. You're not even finding any, you know, muscles like, you know, erect or piney, if you were like thinking it about a skin. So what this can be, you're not even finding any sweat glands also. Can you see here? Maybe, but I'm not like traversing to the epidermis. What this slide is now. So look here, now the answer here is thick skin. I told you that the thick skin is present only on the palms and on the soul. The rest of the entire human body is covered by the thin skin. And the thin skin is a hairy skin. And thin skin, the epidermis is made up of four layers. While in thick skin, it's made up of five layers. Which additionally you get here in this is that uh, from below to above, that's a fourth layer in the epidermis called stratum lucidum, which is a feature of thick skin made up of like protein iledine, which makes this you know epidermis the thick skin translucent when you press upon you can see the blanch here because of this uh, blood dry but you won't find any such, such you know uh, on pressure you won't find any reddish uh, thing because of this you know blanch on this pressing on the dorsum side because you don't have this stratum lucidum on the thin skin then you don't find any hairy apparatus here, you don't find hairs in the palm and soles, right? So, and one more thing is this epidermis on the thick skin is thick, thicker, with a layer of thick layer of pornified uh, keratin over like that. That's why it's called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, right? So, that's the features here. You can see thick skin. That epi epidermis is called keratified, uh, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, and the dermoepidermal junction is also visible, like this in the form of papillary, you know, projections. This is, of course, a feature of stratified squamous epithelium. This feature you will find everywhere where you find a stratified squamous epithelium, maybe in the tonsil, maybe in the tongue, maybe in the esophagus, right? So, this feature makes you confirm that at least this epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium and this dermopidermal junction they know this papillary projections will be more marked in the thick skin the purpose of it is actually to increase the surface area of the stratum basale so as to provide more of surface for those active actively dividing cells and for more of blood and nutrition to reach to this uh, epidermis and of course, I told you there were no hair follicles, which were which was you know, differentiating it from the thin thin skin. And no muscles means it's not a tongue. People generally think it to be a tongue, but because you don't find just in, in the tongue, you find a similar epithelium. But there will be a lot of skeletal muscles underlying to this epidermis, and there will be of course lymphatic follicles like lingual tonsils. You'll also find serous and mucous glands, lingual salivary glands, you know which you're not seeing here. So you confirm now that this is a slide of thick skin. Question number four. Identify the muscle which is in red color and its nerve supply. See the site of origin, the site of insertion and the shape of the muscle. This will help you identify it. Okay. So this muscle is quadratus femoris. Now see the point of origin, actually the quadratus femoris takes origin from the outer or the little surface of this ischial tuberosity on the hip bone, little to the ischial tuberosity on the outer surface. And this muscle winds around laterally and reaches to get inserted on the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur that you can see. And there is a tubercle called quadrate tubercle. So this muscle in its length is quadrangular in shape. Can you see the shape as well? It's quadrangular in shape. So the muscle is quadratus femoris. What will be the nerve supply? Remember, it has its own nerve supply right from this, you know, lumbosacral plexus. Root numbers are L4, L5, S1. This is arising from the ventral division of this anterior primary ramai. While from the same root numbers, 
dorsal division of the anterior primary mine, which now is that its counterpart arising from the same segments that now is superior gluteal nerve. And superior gluteal nerve in a way, it's three muscles, gluteus medius, minimus and tensor fasciality. And remember that Tendelenburg test is also associated with this superior gluteal nerve. Well, this nerve to quadratus femoris also sub, it is coming into the gluteal region from passing below to the piriformis from the greater sciatic foramen. Then it descends down to supply this muscle. Remember, it will also supply us another muscle, and that is inferior capillus. Right? Okay. Collagen type 3 is present in basement membrane, is plain, vitreous humor, or in the hyaline cartilage. Think about types of collagen. So, the answer here is spleen. Do you remember that collagen has been divided into various subtypes according to the thickness of fibers? So, the thickest collagen is type 1, type 2, then type 3, then type 4, and there were long sequence. Many authors have classified in various subgroups, uh, but uh, the important ones are only 5 or 6 which you need to know so remember type 3 collagen is also called reticular fibers these are striated fibers all of them the collagen is actually a striated fibers so i'll tell you more about collagen remember that collagen fibers are wavy bundles one thing fibers are actually wavy and when collagen fibers actually do not branch unlike the elastic fibers elastic fibers are straight fibers and they show branching Collagen fibers are wavy fibers and they do not show fibers. Instead, collagen fibers are packed up, they are seen in bundles. Right? The bundles may divide but not the fibers. And these are striated fibers, elastic fibers are not striated fibers. Then collagen fibers are you know, sensitive to acid and alkali. They dissolve easily. Elastic fibers are resistant to acid and alkali. Well, collagen can easily be stained with the routine stains as well, but you, you know, you need some special stains for elastic fibers like uh, orsin, resorcin, fustian. While talking about reticular fibers, now these reticular fibers are type 3 collagen fibers. These are mainly found in the reticular endothelial tissues like spleen, liver, uh, lymph node, kidneys and all. And uh, they also can be stained with a peculiar stain, like specific stain like silver nitrate or periodic acid shift. So staining with silver stains, it gives a golden brown color to these fibers, the reticular fibers. So if you see a slide like a lymph node or a spleen in golden brown color, you must easily get to know that they are actually precising to appreciate the reticular fibers. Right? So let's... Uh, for your benefit, I'm just uh, put up the different types of collagen fibers. So for a fast revision, you know there are uh, type one collagen. Type one, I told you, is the thickest of type of collagen fibers, and not only thickest, it's the most common, most widely present collagen type one. So it's the most common of all the collagen types. Ninety percent of the body collagen is type 1. Remember this. These fibers show class, classical cross striations and of larger diameter. These fibers are found in dense and loose connected tissues. Right? Every connected tissue you find is type 1. Of course, it will be present there, including the bones. This was several times asked, like the type of collagen found in bones. And remember, type of collagen found in fibrocartilage is also type 1. So, fibrocartilage, if it's not written here, you can add up here fibrocartilage that's also type 1 collagen you'll find it in tendons fascia aponeurosis ligament skin wear dermis of the skin dentine of the teeth and dura matter these are the sites and don't forget about bone these are the sites where you find is type 1 collagen 
type 2 obviously will be a, a thinner type of fibers so it can and you know this all will be striated also so it consists of thin fibers showing faint cross striation why because the thickness is coming reduced so it will be faintly striated these type of fibers are present in hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage vitreous of the eyes and nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc which is like a remnant of notochord what other structure is a remnant of notochord in the human body one is nucleus pulposus another is the apical ligament of dens which reaches into the cranial cavity from the apex of this uh, or endoid process or the dens so that was type 2 type 3 collagen I, this was in the question here these types of collagen they call the reticular fibers and it's present in the connective tissue of organs like spleen lung liver lymph nodes etc the reticular endothelial organs forming the internal framework of these organs so that is type 3 which is reticular type 4 collagen this type of collagen forms a meshwork in the basal lamina uh, that's lamina densa of the epithelium. It also is present in the kidney, glomeruli, and lens capsule. Remember, lens capsule has been asked in your exam some time before. So, basal lamina, lens capsule, these are really important for type 4 collagen. Right? And then type 5. Type 5 is, you know, 5, remember, with placenta. It is present in placenta and is associated with type 1 collagen. So, remember, Type 1, I've already told you that type 1 you will find everywhere because that's for the tensile strength in your organ. So, placenta does have type 1, of course, but because it's peculiarly like, you know, if you ask about placenta, what fiber that you'll first answer should be type 5 collagen. Okay. Then type 7, 6 is not very common. So, type 6, we are, uh, 7 we are discussing here. It's present in the anchoring fibrils that attach the basal lamina to down below to the lamina reticularis. So those are type different common types. I mean, remember one, two, and three collagen can be seen with your light microscopic uh, examination, but uh, the rest of the collagen cannot be seen easily with the light microscopy. You need some special microscopes to identify them. Okay.